Hey, everybody. Welcome back to A Late Show. My first guest is a three-time Academy Award nominee you know from Eastern Promises, Captain Fantastic, and, of course, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. He now makes his directorial debut with the new film, Falling. Pull. Pull. Pull, Dad. Uh, Dad, you can't smoke in here. Let's let your mother sleep for a while. It's very early. Good idea. Please welcome back to A Late Show, Vigo Mortensen. Vigo, good to Hi. see you again. <laughs> now, first of all, before we get started, I just, for anyone confused at home, I'm the one in the green shirt. Vigo is in the blue shirt, because I know people are going, wait, who, which, which one's Vigo? It happens all the time. It happens all the time. I get it. Now, uh, it, we don't see you enough. It's been too long since you've been here. And it's, it's always a pleasure to have you. You, uh, not only because I'm a fan of your work, but it's just great to have a renaissance man here. You, you do it all. You're, you're, you're an actor. Uh, you're, you're, you're a poet. I've got a collection of your poetry, several collections of your poetry. You're a photographer. You're a painter. And, and now a director. What, what is it like for you to be directing your first film, to be on the other side of the lens? What, what, like, what do you, director, think of Viggo Mortensen, actor? Is that guy a prima donna? He was very obedient. He never got to the set later than I did. That's, never. That's he important. Was always on time. But does if it, I was on time, he was on time. But but semi seriously, how does it change your view of your sort of most famous pr profession, which is acting, to be the director? Does do you, do you view your art any differently now that you see the needs of directing? Well, when I go to the movies, and I have been going a lot, um, where I am right now, you can go to the movies. Um, oh, wait a second. Been... Wait a second. I have been told that you're in Europe. No one has told me what country you're in. You're in a country that can show movies. The only one I know yeah. of is New Zealand, and that's not in Europe. Can you get... We've been seeing movies since last August. Do you speak the language of the country you're in? I do. That doesn't help because you speak seven languages. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in I'm in Spain right at this moment. Oh, oh, well. And that's that's Hola. the first place. <laughs> Hola, qué tal? Cómo estamos esta noche? Muy bien, muy bien. Um, I uh, uh, yeah. I, in fact, Falling was actually able to be seen in movie theaters. It's the oh. first country. Where the where falling came out, it came out the second of October, oh. and it's still in some theaters. It's been running for four months. It's kind of like a an indie oh, film okay. hit. So tell me about tell me about falling. What's it about? Well, <clears throat> it's a story I wrote. I've been trying to direct a movie for a long time, for about twenty five years, and I've written lots of screenplays. I've raised some of the money, but never enough, right? And until falling, well, falling, it took me three tries and about four almost five years before I, I was able to shoot it. And the reason I started writing it, I was, it was right after my mom died and she, um, she had had dementia, like, like the main character um, Lance Henriksen in our story does, the guy who plays my father. And uh, there's a lot of that in my family, my dad, my mom, both sides of the family, it's, we're riddled with dementia, our family. And, um, and that was something I wanted to explore, but it was when my mom died, I just wanted to remember everything about her. You know, I loved her and I still love her. And I guess in a way I wanted to keep that flame alive because everything's very present, very alive, you know, when they die. <laughs> Sounds terrible, but, uh, sure. you know, it's just very immediate. All these images of her at different ages and the stories about her that you hear that more or less coincide with, your, coincide with yours. and. So I just wanted to write them down. I ran uh, these ideas, these memories, and it, I started writing, but it became a story, a fictional story, which I guess I felt freer to write than a documentary thing where I'd have to call my brothers and say, did this happen? When did that happen? Who said that? I, I was like, I'm just going to make it up and use the feelings and a few memories, few incidents, but it's a made up story. So that's that's how that came about. And, and it has worked. I have kept that flame alive or that wound open, I guess, you know, of memory uh, about my mom and my dad. 
by making the movie, by, by editing it, by even talking about it now. It's like, sh I can see her. And that's that's what I want. That's that's a that's a true and profound thing. Is that the flame alive and the wound open are the same thing? It's one of the greatest pains, but you wouldn't want to, anyone to take it away from you, because the exactly. pain is also part of them. Yep, that's right. Well, uh, this is also the 20th anniversary of the release of uh, the first the Fellowship, the first Lord of the Rings film. And I understand mm -hmm. you got together recently with the cast. What was that like for you? What was like? What struck you on seeing everybody? Had you all been together in a while? I, I've seen uh, not all of them. I've seen some of them. Um, the Hobbits. I've seen uh, Orlando Bloom now and then. I've seen Sean Bean a few times. You know, but not all of them. It was wonderful. It was just, I think the thing lasted an hour, a couple hours. It could have gone on for... 20, 30 hours for me. I mean, there were so more, so many more things I wanted to ask about. Um, I don't know. It was just. I hope we can do it again. It would, it would be nice to get together, like in New Zealand, ideally, with everyone. Uh, it was. It was great. It was a unique experience. Not just because we all, you know, because the friendships, or because it was a based on this amazing book, you know, Tolkien's book. But just the experience of, of seeing Peter Jackson and this huge crew, hundreds of, you know, mostly New Zealanders who hadn't had much experience, some of them almost none, certainly not on a big movie, learning as they went along and, and Peter Jackson figuring out how to get past obstacles, you know, solve problems every day, big ones, little ones. Just, well, let's make up a shot. Let's do something nobody's ever done. That was like almost every day. It was like a wide open, crazy... Film school, really. It I love the description. I've, I've heard it described as the most expensive low-budget film ever made because that's, its scope, its right. ambition was so great, even though the budget was so enormous, that it was basically, you know, they, they did they spent everything making it the best film you could. And, and I, I'm just wondering, have you ever watched all the films in the extended edition? Have you seen everything? All at once in one No, go. not one shot, but did you watch the extended editions? Have you seen, like... Oh, yeah. Oh, I just oh, yeah. didn't know. Didn't know. Some, some actors don't watch themselves. I, I don't mind. I can take the, the bad with the okay. I mean, you learn watching, and I know some people can't. But you, you, my friend, bow to no one. You are the foremost <laughs> expert. Uh, or... Uh, fan. Maybe most, not an expert, maybe fan. I would say you are the person that I know of in the world who is the most consumed with anything and everything that has to do with Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy. I would change only one thing in that sentence. I am most nourished, not consumed. Okay. Very I, nice. I, I understand that you and I have something in common, other than obviously it's, you know, it's like fraternal Lord. twins, um, yeah. is that we both have vertigo. I do have a little bit of that. You have that? I actually literally had a, had a little attack while we were talking just now. I wasn't sure, like, literally down was that way for a minute. It just, it comes at times that I can't, I, I can't explain. When, 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 how long have you had it? I, my mother had it really badly. She couldn't get up on a, you know, stand on a chair. It would be just torturous. Um, I, I never had it when I was a kid. Maybe one time I remember I was climbed up this steep hill and then I didn't, I was yelling and screaming. I was very little. I didn't dare climb down, and my dad had to come up and get me. But other than that, I've always climbed trees, mountains, everything. Didn't think about it. And um, as an adult, it has hit me once in a while. The first time it really hit me badly was actually during Lord of the Rings. I was doing a scene, you know these movies so well, <clears throat> the second movie, The Battle of uh, for Helm's Deep. Sure. Um, there was a scene, all these scenes were at night and it was wet and rainy and there was a stairway that was about, I don't know, not maybe a foot, a little over a foot wide, no railing, going up the side of a wall. And I'm, there's a scene where I'm fighting my way up, trying to get up to the top, and there's all these orcs coming down and with their weapons and I'm fighting them all the way up. One throws a spear sideways, and I sort of leap over and swing my legs over the precipice and keep going. And I did, I don't know, I did a couple, three takes. And then they said, well, we want to do one more take, but let's just take a break. Well, everybody rest a little. And so everybody was like going, running, rushing down. And I turned, and I was going to go down the stairs, and I suddenly got it. It was really badly, and I was, I froze. And people were waiting, all these orc 
actors were trying to get past me. And I just got against the wall like that. And I said, go ahead, go by, go by. And I was just looking up at the night sky. I couldn't look down. And they're looking at me, you all right? And I go, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just resting. I'm just relaxing. And I was like, so tense. And then I slowly kind of curled around because I couldn't, I just had to look at the stone. I was just like, like a spider, you know, against the wall. And then everybody had left. So then it was obvious that I was up there doing this. And there, people are going, Vigo, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just, just, you know. <laughs> just really in character. Just to I'm relax. <laughs> just stay in character. Oh, come on down and have a cup of coffee. Do you want me to throw you something up there, a sandwich? I go, no, no, no. It's just the image of catching something over this abyss, wow. you know. It was horrible. And I, and I was really thinking, I don't know how I'm going to... I don't even want to go down, I, much less do I want to fight on these stairs. And I'm, I'm dreading when they all have to come up and troop past me again to get in position. Somehow I got through it, but it was horrible. It was really horrible. Ladies and gentlemen, Falling is in select theaters and on demand next Friday. The man is Viggo Mortensen, everybody. We'll be right back with New York Times journalist Charles Blow. Thank you.